So this is my first winter with an EV, and I've been doing a deep dive into all of the technology that keeps you warm in an EV over the winter. So I think I got a few things figured out, and I would, would appreciate if anyone who sees this online, uh, if you have any other information or uh, something that I should know about in terms of uh, winter EV operation, in particular the, the HVAC system, the heat pump, uh, please leave a comment down below. So I bought an Equinox EV and pretty happy with it so far. And I've been going through all the controls and the gauges and the screens and the displays. And little by little, I've been getting used to the, uh, the HVAC system and learning how it's sort of best to be used. And I think I finally figured a few things out. Uh, part of my understanding issue was uh, in some of the naming that goes along with uh, some of the controls and that are in the... Uh, uh, that are in the analytics uh, for the Equinox. So effectively, the heat pump is uh, the central unit that uh, conditions the cab, conditions, uh, you know, where, where you sit in the vehicle, but it also helps to condition or conditions the batteries. <clears throat> so I've been trying to figure out the difference between uh, preheating and conditioning and preconditioning the batteries and preconditioning the cabin. And General Motors kind of uses the same terminology for both in some places. So it's taken me a little bit of time to understand exactly the difference between the two of them. So I hope this helps anyone with an Equinox. And I'm sure that there are other vehicles, other manufacturers and brands out there that uh, may have some similar uh, similar uh, situations, you know, similar technology that this may help as well. So um, <clears throat> in particular, General Motors breaks down uh, their energy use for climate into three different categories. Well, I guess I'll put four, but, but three that are on the display that uh, you see when you're driving. Um, the first one is remote climate. And it took me a little while to understand the difference between remote climate and climate and fast charge prep. And then the other category is driving, which is pretty straightforward. So remote climate refers exclusively to the energy that's used in preheating the cabin. So if you use uh, the schedule timer or you use uh, the app in order to uh, preheat your cabin, the energy that's used before you get in the vehicle and before you touch the brake uh, is identified in remote climate. Driving is driving. That's pretty straightforward. And the other category, the third, is climate and fast charge prep. So that would be any energy that the heat pump uses after you've started driving. And that would be inclusive of the energy used to heat the cabin and the energy used to precondition the battery should you, should you do that, should you need to do that. So effectively, the way the readout works is when you get in the vehicle having preheated it, you'll see that the climate, fast charge, the driving uh, are generally at zero kilowatts because you haven't done anything yet. And the remote climate might have gone through 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 kilowatts um, in preheating and conditioning the cabin. <clears throat> so once you start driving, the remote climate power consumption stops. And that energy use transfers over to the climate and fast charge prep category. So when you first start, you'll see that 100% of the energy you would have used is in remote climate. And then little by little, as you drive, climate and fast charge and driving will inch their way upward. So if you go on a short drive, it's conceivable that uh, the energy used in the remote climate category could be just as much as in the climate and fast charge category. Um, and my understanding, if the heat pump in a car is the same as a heat pump that's in a house, uh, there's an initial uh, spool up amount of energy that a heat pump will use getting the system up to speed and converting cold air to warm air or vice versa. So that startup is a little more power intensive than the ongoing operation of uh, the heat pump as you're traveling. So that's my understanding. If anyone has any other technical information on that, 
I'd love to hear. I'd love to have you comment below and, and let me know. Uh, but I'm going on the assumption that the heat pump in the vehicle works the same as the heat pump in, in a house. So as you continue to drive, the driving will, the driving component will take over as, as, the, as the component that consumes the most energy. And the climate and fast charge continues to, to draw a percentage of, of, your, of your energy. But the more you drive, the farther you go, the smaller the percentages for the remote climate and the climate and fast charge will, will become. So the last piece of information I think I need to address is the, uh, is the charge prep. So uh, as I said, the heat pump conditions your cabin and preheats your battery. So um, effectively that heat pump is, is your central power source, your central heat source for the entirety of the car. And uh, when you go to fast charge in cold temperatures, the recommendation is that you, you prepare the battery by warming it up to a temperature at which the cells will more readily accept electrons. So that uh, charge prep or battery precondition happens in one of two ways in an Equinox. Uh, number one, it will happen when you uh, use uh, the built-in maps in order to plot a route to the next charge point. So when you do that, the system will automatically, automatically assume that you're going to charge, and if the temperature is too low, it will precondition and heat up that battery so that it's ready to accept a faster charge when you get to a DC fast charger. Um, some people who go to the DC fast chargers and experience slower, um, slower charging rates um, can, can uh, ascribe that to a lower temperature of the battery. Um, <clears throat> the other way that you can precondition the battery is to manually go in to uh, the menu system uh, and you can precondition the battery manually knowing that you're going to uh, a, a charge point, a DC fast charger. So that energy is relatively significant, um, and but it offsets, since you're going to charge anyway, it offsets the time you're going to take at the fast charger. So for the most part, it's a recommended thing to do. If you don't preach pre-charge or precondition the battery, uh, what I've been, what I've, uh, what I've researched is that um, when you plug in your vehicle, uh, you may find that if your battery is too cold, you're getting very, very slow charge speeds. Well, what's happening is the charger and the car are negotiating the speed at which electrons can effectively travel, and that um, the charging uh, station um, could be preheating or warming up or, or waiting for the battery to warm up in order to be able to feed it more electrons. With that said, um, it's also a recommendation uh, from the manufacturer that you plug in nightly, even if you only need a small amount of charge um, in cold temperatures. Because what's happening is the preconditioning uh, of your cabin will happen over the energy that's used from your, your charger at home. Uh, and we'll use that energy rather than energy from the battery in the vehicle itself. So uh, it's taken me a few days to sort of get my head around all of this. Um, I'm hoping that uh, it's helpful to someone else out there, especially with an Equinox EV. Uh, and if there's anything I've gotten wrong, uh, because I'm, I'm just gleaning this from multiple sources online and doing a lot of reading and watching a lot of videos, uh, but I think I've settled on how this system uh, effectively works. Uh, the other recommendation that I've heard uh, is that uh, if you want to preheat your vehicle and have a toaster, turn the preconditioning temperature up a little higher. Uh, that way, it's uh, trying to achieve a bit of a, a bit of a higher uh, higher state to precondition your cabin, so it's a little more comfortable for you when you first get in uh, in the morning. Um, and uh, and always, especially in cold temperatures, if you have to charge uh, at a DC fast charger, um, either plot your route to the DC fast charger, give it, from what I've read, at least 20 minutes 
uh, a five minute shot or a five minute precondition is just not enough. Uh, there literally is a thousand pounds of battery in your car and uh, the heating system has to heat up that mass of lithium and copper and cobalt and all of those, all those rare earth chemicals. So uh, give yourself at least 20 minutes, maybe a half hour, um, or let the car figure it out itself by plotting the route and giving it the time that it needs in order to pre-charge and precondition that battery, uh, making it ready for a fast charge on the road. Uh, if you like the channel, subscribe, throw me a like. And again, if you have any other questions or any other comments on this, drop them in the comments down below.